Hey, this is Martin from Barcelona. I have just spent some time with the LG G8 and the V50. And instead of making a typical hands-on video, I wanted to talk about a trend that I noticed. I think LG is becoming really weird again. They're going back to making really weird stuff. So let me tell you what they're making and why I think they're making it. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. With the daily problems feature, you can now learn real science, maths, and engineering in just a few minutes, even on the go. So the G8 and the V50 both appear to be pretty typical Android flagships at first glance. They have all the specs you would expect, like the latest Qualcomm processors, high-resolution OLED screens, multiple cameras on both sides, and finally, even decently sized batteries. You know, the usual stuff. But when you look a little closer, there is just so much weird stuff going on. The less crazy device of the two is the G8, and still, this one has hand ID and a vibrating screen. Like, they actually added a whole new time-of-flight sensor to enable hand ID, which apparently scans the position of your veins in your hands to authenticate you, because unlocking your phone with your fingerprint or your face is just so 2018. Oh, and you can use gestures to control stuff with your hands, like accepting incoming calls or changing the song that is playing. Cool. And then the vibrating display. On top of what LG calls the boombox speaker, which uses the entire body of the phone as a resonance chamber, now the whole OLED panel is used as a diaphragm. I actually like this idea. The G8 sounded really loud and rich when I tried it at the press event and I didn't see any visual distortions, but man, still weird. But the extra weird stuff actually starts with the V50. Not only is this a 5G phone, because of course it is, it also has an RGB LED reminding you of this fact. It lights up every time you turn the phone on or off, and also every time you actually connect to a 5G network. Presumably to let the LTE peasants know that you belong to the 5G master race. Anyway, the absolute weirdest thing must have been the case though. LG basically said, screw foldable phones this year, we're making a flip cover instead, where we put a 2K OLED screen inside. The case itself is pretty chunky, but not completely unwieldy. It actually yogas all the way back, which is cool, I guess, and it connects to the phone using these pogo pins on the back. Rocking this case and the RGB 5G logo would basically be like tattooing nerd on your forehead, but if that's you, cool. And don't get me wrong, I don't actually completely hate this case. You can run two apps side by side, you can use one screen as a gamepad, and so on. Not terribly practical in my opinion, but at least if you end up not liking it, you can just remove the case and be left with a pretty decent Android phone. Now, there were other weird announcements at these events as well, like how LG claims that their G series will be their LTE line going forwards, whereas their V series will be the 5G line going forwards which I think makes no sense at all, because I mean, I'm pretty sure the G series will get 5G in the next year or two as well. I mean, every other flagship phone will have it, so that makes no sense. But anyway, if you're just here because you're wondering why LG is weird again, then I have to speculate a bit, but I do have a pretty good theory, I think. See, LG used to be pretty weird in the past. They had a flexible phone you could actually bend in 2013. They had a modular LG G5 where you could pop the bottom of the phone off and replace it with weird stuff. They released some of the most awkwardly hilarious commercials I have ever seen and so on. And it didn't really work for them. Sales were disappointing, so the head of the mobile division was replaced with this guy in 2017. This new guy introduced the ABCD strategy. I explain in detail what it means in this video, but the concept was to cut back on the weird and just focus on the basics. Audio, battery, camera, and display. You can actually see this in phones like the V30, the G7, and the V40, all of which were arguably just pretty standard, solid Android flagships. And without the right marketing to support that, that also didn't work. LG phone sales last quarter were down over 40% year over year, and the business is shrinking at an alarming rate, while operating income is now at a negative 322 trillion won. So they replaced the previous new guy with another new guy. And I think he thinks that in 2019, where Samsung, Huawei, Oppo, and the others are so aggressive about grabbing all of the attention, just making a decent basic phone is not enough anymore. LG has to do its own crazy stuff to stand out. And I actually kind of agree. I mean, I think the RGB 5G logo and the foldable flip case thing aren't exactly the innovation that LG needs, but they sure as hell need something to stand out with in this specific market. So I'm really excited to see what the more experimental LG can come up with in the next couple of years. Now, if you're a Tech Altar viewer, there's a really good chance that you actually like learning new stuff. 
You can now learn real maths, science, and engineering in tiny, convenient packages in just five to 10 minutes a day, even on your phone. They add a few new problems every day, and each one has the context and ideas that you need to tackle it, so it's fast and fun, and you really learn something. There's a full course associated with each daily problem if you want to go deeper, and there are thousands of users discussing the solutions if you ever get stuck. You can try Brilliant for free, and the first 200 people to sign up using my link in the description will get 20% off of their premium subscription. So you can unlock all of the archived stuff and you can get access to all of the classes. So go and try it out now.